Hi, it's me, back again with yet another video butchering the 40 plus years of terminology and lore from the beloved Battletech universe. I'm working my way through the Secession Wars era game of armored combat box set and next in line is literally the it's the next one in the box. It looks neat, I know nothing about it, but I'm gonna paint it. I'm Six Snipes, this is the CPLT C1 Catapult. Let's get painting. Having read enough of the literature within the material inside of the box, I see that the mechs included are meant to be dated to the Secession Wars era, a period of the Battletech universe wherein the primary unifying power of the Inner Sphere decided to AFK and the ruling houses of different galactic sects did, without any better way of putting it, just not get along. This roughly 300 year era is characterized by the never ending infighting of these houses and cataclysmic wars resulting in a catastrophic loss of technology to such a degree where things like battleships went extinct Extinct, and technology dating back to half a millennia ago is often far superior to anything produced in the massively downgraded implementations of the present. Sound familiar? Good. Towards the end of the Secession Wars, where this box seems to pick up, you have a very nice variety of mechs to field provided in the kit, but realistically, these are not going to be fresh off the line, shiny machines with that new car smell and no check engine lights to speak of. These are decades to centuries old, worn, battle engines ruggedly standing the test of time and serving purposes unimaginable to what they were designed for so many generations ago. In other words, these are archaic legends, and I feel like models should represent that. For this purpose, I will be weathering this piece quite significantly and painting it with the colors of my choosing as the centerpiece of my custom mercenary company. Starting off with the same process as always, we're going to look for any mold lines and eliminate them with a hobby knife or sanding stick alike. On most of these, they're consigned to the edges and near the rear of the model, so even if you don't, it's less obvious, but for one reason or another, there's just one going straight down the center of the body, which you really do have to make sure it gets thoroughly smoothed out, otherwise it's going to be very obvious in the final product. Doing research, I was surprised to learn the Catapult is in fact a heavy class mech. In spite of being similar in size to my previous Shadowhawk, figure being a second line indirect firing support platform. It lacks the humanoid brawler aesthetic with a head and arms sufficient to bash other mechs in the melee combat common to this period and instead it utilizes a pair of what many people call ears, which are more or less a variety of heavy weapon systems mounted to either side of the cockpit carapace, in this instance being a pair of devastating long range missile batteries. Looking more like a strange bipedal insect with its reverse hinged legs, it's a very distinctive profile and an iconic model in the franchise. It also looks way cooler than it used to me. I mean, I'm, what the fuck is that? For the sake of weathering, I went a step beyond. Taking my pin vise, I used varying diameter bits and drilled holes of different sizes and depths to leave the impression that sections of this mech have taken fire over the years and bear the pitted remains proudly on its armor since, putting a trio of holes on its right leg and on the left hand side of the canopy as if small arm units were smart enough to try and take out the pilot rather than the machine. I then scored bits off the left leg with my hobby knife to imply gashing blows, took chunks off some of the exterior. Finally, to complete the effect of carbon scoring typical of heavy laser fire or intense heat from incendiary rounds, I took my pot of textured paint and applied it straight onto the plastic. The color doesn't matter as the base coat will cover this, but it is Citadel's Martian Iron Crust. Moving on to the airbrush stage, I would come in with Vallejo's Sky Gray and do a nice base coat. This is a very light pseudo white color, almost like Citadel Corax White, except in this case it can actually go for more than two hours after you break the seal for the first time before it doubles as liquid cement. Unlike pure white, when I'm done here, the coat is gray enough not to be ultra vibrant boosters for whatever color is next, giving the suitably muted color, but bright enough that it translates to the eye unlike some of the grimdark bullshit you see. Shout out to my mom who got me the Vallejo Weathering Model Air Paint set last Christmas because she she knows what's up, and this is literally what almost all of my colors in this video are from now on. I found out that it comes with two types of rust, the same pigmentation, but one is from the Model Air run and one is from the Model Air Metallic run, which means there's metal flakes in it which makes it look metallic. I don't think rust really looks metallic, but this did pique my interest. I will start by base coating it with regular rust brown. This is not because I want my model to look rusty, I just like the brown. The result will look more like chocolate than rust to me. I then remixed a a small amount with that metallic and just spritzed it on the parts with the weathering already in place just to see how it looked to try to emphasize the battle damage. You can hear me being a, a fucking mouth breather in this clip, it's kind of funny. I then came in and used Model Air Sand Yellow. It's my favorite out of the whole box, near one-to-one -one match of Xandri Dust from the Citadel line, and I brightened the whole thing up with a nice solid zenithal highlight, catching only the topmost details. This isn't to simulate a shadow effect, the color is different enough that I just want it to look like the top of the mech is painted different than the bottom facing panels, and it brings out a lot of contrast between the lights and the darks, making for a very cool Air Trooper color scheme. I then tried to dry brush the rust metallic onto the model, but it was too thin and it just didn't work well because, no. oh, it's not 
not dry I enough. So I used tweezers and clamped a piece of sponge down to where I could get a little bit of it and sponge it onto a very scattered pattern wherein it looks like paint has been chipped away, exposing the now oxidizing metal underneath. Once again, I used Vallejo Matte Clear Coat to protect my work thus far so I can rest easy knowing my dumb ass can't scratch the paint off that easily and now move on to the wash phase. Basically, using the little pot of Agrax earth shade you get in the Start Painting Space Marines kit from Warhammer, I liberally applied all over details of the mech. It really is my favorite wash all around. It has a nice dark tone but goes where it's supposed to into the recesses. This little pot has done so much for me alone. I did one leg and one battery and not the other and you really can see where there's a big difference in definition now. Covering the whole thing, now the model is the darkest it's ever gonna be because the next immediate step is bringing up some of the edges back with a nice general dry brushing. I tried mixing sand yellow with cold white to thicken it up and that really didn't go so well so I called that quits and took time to resuscitate this ancient repotting project of Zandri dust. Mixing that with cold white, I actually had the pigmentation and thickness to get a real highlight going, using a broad brush, losing most of the paint, and then lightly dragging it along all the edges and leaving just enough to line the sides of every panel and corner on the sculpt. This stage really finishes bringing out the beautiful work <laughs> from this what? model. It's the best example of just how much better these new lines of miniatures are in comparison to what you would have gotten for your money who knows how many decades ago when this game started out. I mean, look at this piece of shit. Would you, would, given the choice between this and this, would you buy this? You wouldn't buy this. I wouldn't want to buy this if it was the only option. I would rather die. I would rather die. This this is this is complete shit. Moving on to detailing, we're finally here to make this a whole mech. I use Vallejo Airbrush Silver because it actually has the staying power most airbrush paints don't and really has the perfect smooth texture you're looking for out of the bottle for brushing wild. I consciously didn't symmetrically hit every detail on each side for this mech. I wanted some panels on one side to be silver and the same ones on the other to not be, as if some parts were either damaged or worn away and were switched out to keep this near ancient machine running. Still, somewhat consistently, I did the hip and knee rotors with the forward and backward plates on the kneecaps, the foot joints and weird circular dishes that make up the feet and the hinge connections to the ankle. I also did all the barrels for the medium lasers on the torso, some random plates on the carapace, the rear ventilation panels on the main body, and some other bits and bobs for detail, plus the backpack ports for the missile batteries. There's no jump jets in sight, unlike the Shadowhawk, because there's no way something shaped like this is going to get off the ground. Finally, I got the hinges, which control the firing angle for the missile units, plus these little metal studs on top. It's worth noting for the holes where I drilled to simulate cratered impacts from ordnance, I dotted just the very middle of them to hint at exposed metal from where the round penetrated the furthest. Now coming in with null oil, I can covered every bit of what I touched with metallic to give it that oily machine-y look I like. As always, this is a good place to stop if you want to stop, but I'm going to take detailing one step further and try painting yellow. Yellow can be a oh, massive bitch to shit. paint. But it's important to remember it's not about the yellow you're painting on, it's about the coat you put under it. I started off base coating all the pieces I want yellow with sky gray mixed with the glaze medium to make it ideal for brushing conditions. The areas I chose are this plate on the nose here, this little line on the very ankle of the left leg, the backside stripe just here, and the two big panels housing the missiles on the LRM, hitting each and every one with at least two coats to have as solid of gray of a base as I can. Now we're going to mix some Vallejo Scarlet with the aforementioned gray to brighten it up and coat the sections with what now appears to be a bright watermelony hue. Two coats later, we're going to mix that same paint with a drop of cold white and Vallejo flat yellow until we get a nice medium peach to work with. The larger panels with their detailed protruding missiles take far longer to dry than if they were flat. I don't know why, but that's the nature of detailed surfaces. And at times, I would use my airbrushes to blow on them and speed up the setting process and then coming back with my new color. Yellow being very transparent and iffy, it took a lot of drops combined with glaze medium to get the pigment to where it needed to be, being actually yellow now. If you want a darker or deeper yellow, you really need to do an undercoat like this or your model will either look too pale or too patchy no matter how many coats you give it. We're basically at an arguably yellow stage now, though you could still say it's orange, but if you leave some of the last coat uncovered like with this back panel even at the edges, you get a very cool gradient. After enough adding yellow, I use more silver to dot just each and every little missile on the face of the panels and get ready to use another wash. 
I came back in with Agrax Earthshade, and I'm going to detail the yellow now. Brown washes work best with yellow because color theory, I'm not a paintologist or whatever or anything, just go Google it why, but it, it just does. Hitting all these sections now, I want to make sure the wash goes into the recesses and doesn't pull on the surface, making it look moderately dirty and weathered without completely muddying up what I just worked for. With all the little nubs, this was much harder on the main missile heads than anything else, and it really didn't turn out how I liked, and I will be coming back to that later. Coming from the weathering kit, once again, I'm going to brush on Vallejo Metallic Air Black. It's a black metal color, only onto the canopy windows of the cockpit. I then came in with Nuln Oil and further darkened down the sheen of the coat and just vaguely dotted the interior of every panel with silver to create a very nice gradient with the appearance of armored tinted glass. Finally, for the freehanding, mixing sky gray with gl 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 <laughs> mixing sky gray with glaze medium once more, I write a cheeky little reference to the shorthand designation of this mech on the side of the main body. Make a little arrow pointing towards where the weapon ideally fires, and then on the top of the other missile box, I jot down its official weapons designation, the LRM-15. We've actually come this far without using a matte black standard paint, but I am going to use Vallejo black to just make little stripes on the cute little caution area of the ankle and back plate where I painted the yellow because it's a piece of heavy machinery and in the grim dark future of the 41st millennium, safety is our number one priority. All that said and done, I did not like how my missile batteries took the wash. With the little nubs, they caught a lot of the pigment where they shouldn't have and kept it pulling towards the center where it shouldn't be. So I came back in with this time pure yellow and thinly coated over it with at least partially masking much of the darker brown areas and leaving a dirty but still caution yellow aesthetic. Yes, this was tedious. It's a hard bit of the model to paint for sure, but that's the nature of the beast. Most sculpts you see of the cat have recessed holes rather than extruded missiles for this reason, but some people like me just like their little knobby missiles, so what are you going to do? Now, all we have left to do is to look at it. I really like the way my cat turned out. I can't wait to paint more mechs in this color scheme and play with some weathering. I think I'm going to have an all bipedal walker theme with locusts and fleas to overwhelm the enemy during pirating raids and maybe even have some crabs for heavy support. This is a new channel and if you want to see it continue and do that, push some buttons or something, I don't know. Until then, when I tackle that project and the rest of my pile of shame, I'm Six Snipes and I'm going to go play with figures. You versus the guy she, she tells you not to worry about. See, the joke is that it's ugly.